We're at the Blown Flannel Mat XT, and today we're taking creep feed grinding to a whole new level. In our first video, we introduce you to creep feed grinding by taking 40 thousandths depth of cut in 1018 steel. Then we stepped it up a notch by cutting a radius profile in 4140 using this creep feed wheel from Tiralid. In today's video, we're gonna be increasing the complexity even more by taking this piece of 4140 and not only grinding a radius profile along the length, we're gonna be grinding five grooves along the length as well. A lot of people have been asking in the comments why we would choose grinding of this profile over machining it in a mill. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why you would choose this process over machining, and it all starts with dressing of the wheel. So I've changed to a new wheel, and as you can see, the V grooves that we're gonna be grinding into our part is actually dressed directly into the wheel. Now this wheel started out exactly like the other one where it was flat all the way across and we dressed the grooves directly into the wheel using the rotary dresser. Mounted on our rotary is a roll or full form dresser. So we're gonna feed down directly over the top of it and it's gonna dress the entire wheel all at once. In our previous videos, we dressed the wheel with a single point diamond and we had to feed all the way across the wheel. This roll has literally thousands of diamonds impregnated all the way around it, which is gonna help dress the perfect profile into our wheel. You may can hear a little bit of the vibration. You actually can see it in the glass a little bit, but that's because the wheel is running out from where I changed it out. As soon as we do this initial dressing, that vibration is gonna go away. So now we got our initial dressing complete, our wheels running true, it's time to balance this wheel. This machine is equipped with an acoustic sensor which listens for vibrations in the spindle. And how we're gonna balance it is just simply go to the IVIS software. So now we simply go to limit and auto balancing. Now it's listening for those vibrations and fine tuning the wheel to balance it just perfectly. Now our balancing is complete. We're gonna condition the wheel just a little bit more to make sure everything is running perfect. Then we'll be ready to run our part. Now we certainly could have sped this process up by putting this particular part in a mill and roughing out the outside shape first. But to do that, I would have had to set the part up, touch it off, find a tool, build it, program it, and run it. And for one part, I can easily grind it faster than I could have done all that. Now, as we're roughing this part out, we're gonna be losing some of our shape on our grinding wheel. So about every quarter of an inch, I'm gonna stop and go and redress the wheel and take about eight thousandths off. So after it redresses, it's gonna come over, grind another quarter inch off, come back, redress, and repeat that process until our finish pass. So for this part, we're running at 4,500 surface footage. We're taking a 40 thousandths depth of cut at 10 inches a minute. And so far, we're only hitting about 50% spindle load. Now the coolant velocity is helping keep that wheel open and keep that swarf away from the wheel, but it's not gonna be perfect and the wheel is gonna eventually start loading up the more we grind. So by redressing, that's also gonna help open that wheel back up and keep our wheel sharp. So why creep feed grinding? Why slow feed rate? 
heavy depth of cut. Well, think of things like uh, hearth couplings, broach tools, press brake tools, guideways. There's all kinds of things that you can grind with a machine like this. A lot of things can be set up with multiple parts all in a line. And you can have a setup like we have here where we have the profile ground into the wheel itself. And with just a handful of passes or some things with one single pass, you can have your full profiles ground into your parts all at once. And after that, your part is complete and they all have a perfect profile in them. And this thing came out so amazing. The beauty of this process and this machine is that the rotary dresser is built inside the machine. And we can add it into our program to redress the wheel whenever we need to. So redressing that wheel right before we run a finishing pass ensures that this part comes out perfect and beautiful every single time. Now throughout this video, I mentioned some of the applications of creep feed grinding. This part has a small radius at the bottom, and it also has blend fillets at the top. Now to do that, you would either have to have a full form tool or a tapered ball nose. It's gonna be really hard to achieve the same surface finish on a mill that the grinder did in the same amount of time. But perhaps the biggest advantage of grinding over conventional machining methods is when you have hard materials. We're talking 58 rock wool and up. When you start getting into hard materials like that, Tool wear and cycle time will start becoming an issue. But with the grinding, you always have a perfect tool whenever you redress your wheel. In the future, we're going to be making some videos in that hard material. So make sure you got that notification bell turned on because you're not gonna wanna miss it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought about this video. We'll see y'all next time.